Nukes. Nuclear weapons are some of the most dangerous weapons that humanity has in its list of munitions. In the wrong hands, it could end the entire world's population, and with that it comes a responsibility not just to your own people, but the innocence of even your enemies and other cultures around the world. Welcome to Amazing World Wonders on FTD Facts, where we look at nuclear weapons and get a brief understanding of them and figure out why they are one of the world's greatest wonders. How's it going everybody? My name is Dave Wobble and you know what, if you're here for the first time, this is a series that I do every single Friday where I look at amazing things from around the world that just make us wonder how they were made and what they are used for. In my last episodes, I looked at EM rail guns, I looked at smart self-guided bullets, and of course I even looked at Sweden's adaptive camo. But today, we're gonna learn about nukes. So we all know nuclear technology comes from the splitting of an atom. But how does a tiny little atom, something that you and I can't even grab and hold on to, make an explosion that goes for miles and miles and miles? Well, let's figure out how that works. To understand this, we have to know the fact that there are pretty much two major types of nuclear bombs. There is fusion and fission. Your basic recipe for a fission nuclear bomb is using either uranium-235 or plutonium-239 with a small little neutron. What will happen in the case of uranium-235 is that the neutron will fire extremely fast into the uranium and split it, thus splitting the atom. But fusion, however, works a little bit different, somewhat actually kind of the opposite way. And although it's very, very complex, pretty much the idea is that you're taking two hydrogen isotopes and combining it to make helium. Kind of. Now, usually most atomic bombs are identified as a fission-based bomb, whereas thermonuclear bombs or H-bombs or hydrogen bombs use fusion and fission combined. But even as of today, only two bombs have ever been dropped in the use of war. These ones were Little Boy and Fat Man, in which Little Boy dropped on August 6th, 1944. This was a uranium gun type fission bomb where the other one was an implosion based bomb. Both were created out of the famous Manhattan Project, which was America's program to create a nuclear device. It was headed by Robert Oppenheimer with approximately 130,000 employees behind it, in which as of 2017 standards, it would have cost $27 billion for the entire Manhattan Project. Although scientists had been working on this for quite a long time, in 1938, German scientists Otto Hahn and Fritz Straussmann had discovered nuclear fission. And by the time the war came out, the Allies were extremely afraid that the Germans would beat them to making a nuclear weapon. Which of course gave America the advantage because they eventually created their bomb known as the Fat Bomb Mark III, which was dropped on July 16, 1945 in New Mexico. This is known as the Trinity Test in which it was the very first nuclear bomb ever Ever dropped and interesting enough there was only one bomb that was dropped before they used it on the Japanese. So nuclear devices are measured in what is known as kilotons and megatons. Basically meaning how many tons of TNT it would take to do the job. A kilo meaning thousands of tons of dynamite and of course mega equaling millions of tons of TNT. And most of us generally think of nukes being very, very big, but believe it or not, they actually came also very, very small and for the regular soldier to use. For example, the M338 or Davy Crockett device is the smallest nuclear device in history. It had a yield of only 10 to 20 tons of TNT and could be fired from a recoilless rifle or a Davy Crockett launcher system and was developed in the late 50s. However, when it comes to the big boys, Castle Bravo was the biggest explosion that the U.S. had ever done. The dropping of this bomb commenced on March 1st, 1964, and it was dropped on Bikini Atoll, a place that was commonly used for nuclear testing, and it had a size of 50 megatons. As a matter of fact, one of the major downsides to the tests is that the residents on nearby atolls were not evacuated and received major radiation sickness. Now, the Russians also made their own very large bomb. As a matter of fact, it's the largest bomb in history. It's known as the Tsar Bomba. It was detonated on October 30th, 1961, and it equaled 50 megatons. And it was also stated that it could have doubled in its yield if it used a uranium tamper, but there was only one test done and its complete destruction zone was so big that it had a radius of 35 kilometers or a diameter of 70 kilometers. 
To give you a point of reference, that is the entire city of Paris and Toronto and its surrounding cities. It's huge. And by 1966, the entire yield from all the nuclear tests had come in at about 510 3,000 kilotons, or approximately 510.3 megatons. And as far as other countries, they did have tests, but in a much smaller capacity. The UK started off with their test, known as Orange Herald, on May 31st, 1957, with a bomb that was approximately 720 kilotons. France had Gerbois Blue on February 13th, 1960, equaling 70 kilotons. China's bomb, named 596, equaled approximately 22 kilotons and exploded on December 16th, 1964. India had one 10 years later, known as Smiling Buddha, which was around 12 kilotons, exploding on May 18th, 1974. The most recent tests are Pakistan's Chagi 1, which was on May 28th, 1998, equaling 40 kilotons, and North North Korea's first one was actually under one kiloton, and that was on October 9th, 2006. In total, there have been 1,054 tests that have ever been commenced. Russia has done over 700 of these, and all of these tests were either done underground, underwater, above ground, or even way up in the stratosphere. For example, Starfish Prime was the largest nuclear test in outer space with a yield of 1.4 megatons at a height of 250 meters. For underwater, the most famous shot is this one right here of Baker. However, the deepest one was Operation Wing Wham, which had a 15 kiloton yield at a depth of 1,000 feet. However, by 1966, a lot of things changed. This is when the world introduced the comprehensive nuclear test ban which prohibited all testing of nuclear devices for either peace, science, or war. For the United States, it cost approximately $9.3 trillion for all of its nuclear testing program. The effects of nukes have not only been damaging to human beings, but also to the environment. For example, there is the Runet Dome, which is leaking radioactive material into the ocean, and that is in the Marshall Islands. Overall, the effects of all these tests has always caused great tension between nations, which as a result always makes us wonder how far down the horizon we are towards the brink of total destruction. And because of all their destructive capability and sheer quickness of creating it, and its more peaceful results of nuclear power, the nuclear bomb is inducted as an amazing world wonder. And for its father, Robert Oppenheimer, who once stated after the test of Trinity, Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. Which makes the world wonder why we made them in the first place. So there you go, guys. That is it. That's me looking at nuclear bombs, nukes, all that sort of stuff. But my name is Dave Wapple. Hope you guys really liked this episode. And if you did, be sure to give it a big like and also subscribe to the channel. And be sure to check out the playlist of Amazing World Wonders because, I mean, I love this series and I hope you guys do too. So see you in the next one. Bye. Okay, guys, here's that playlist that I was telling you about. Feel free to check it out. I know you guys will absolutely like it. Other than that, you guys have yourself a fantastic day.